Um, so the bad news is last week the the, the health care bill is, didn't get through the Senate. Um, I mean, there's, in my judgment, there's no other way to say it than this is disappointing, this is frustrating. Uh, this is something that, an issue that we had promised the American people that we're going to deal with. Um, we had a long and vigorous and intense debate in the House of Representatives earlier this Congress, earlier this year, got a bill through that we conservatives thought was pretty good. I, I'm always honest with the voters. It wasn't a full repeal of Obamacare, but it was a good start. Um, and we were hopeful the same thing was going to happen in the Senate. We actually we were planning to go to Italy to see our granddaughters. Um, well, we were going to see our daughter and son-in-law too, but we put most of it in the We canceled that, uh, thinking that we were going to be in session some here in, in August. We frankly should be in session, in my judgment, dealing with this issue. But um, look, it's uh, my attitude is: you're you're an American. You got to be optimistic, uh, just by nature. When you live in this great country, you should you should have it in the the can-do and glass half-full attitude which I do, so I still think we're going to get something done on this, and we certainly do. Premiums are out of control. You, you guys know all, yeah. all, the, all the information there. So that's the bad news. There, there is some, some good news. Um, I do think we will get to the tax reform, and, and, and that will be positive. Uh, as part of the tax reform, one of the things we're working on doing is um, putting welfare reform as part of that package. I mean, in simple terms, if you're going to deal with the $21 trillion debt, which we now have in this great country. If you're gonna deal with that, you, you gotta relax the, the ridiculous regulatory burden put on entrepreneurs, job creators in, in our economy. You have to deal with Obamacare and you have to reform the tax code. We gotta do all those things. But frankly, even those three won't be enough to, to get the kind of growth we need to deal with that debt. I mean, you gotta get to 3% growth or higher annual growth rate. As you all know, over the last eight years, we've been bumping along about a percent, percent a quarter. That will not cut it. 3% will, but you can't get there if you also don't have a labor force. I mean, one of the things I talk, and you probably hear from some of the folks you do you, you business with, every employer I talk to will tell me, uh, typically the line is something like this. They'll say, Jordan, in spite of all the crazy things that go on in Washington over the last several years, we're still creating jobs. Our biggest problem is we can't find people to work. And as you may know, we now have, for the first time, or excuse me, the lowest percentage since World War II of working age people actually in the workforce. We I mean, just do in some in ag, our, our hosts here understand this, to, to get, and we're working on an ag guest worker program and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that maybe at the end, but you have to get people to work, um, which means you're gonna have to move them from welfare to, to work. So we, we have a bill that we've sponsored with, uh, on, that, on the House side with a number of folks, and on the Senate side with Senator Lee, which would say, if you're getting a benefit, there has to be a work component associated with it. And a couple states who've got waivers from the federal government to implement this kind of program, state of Alabama, for example, in the SNAP program, which I know we'll, you may want to talk about as well, but uh, in the state of Maine, when they impose the work requirement, you have to volunteer at a not-for-profit, be getting some kind of job training, some kind of education, some component to get the benefit. When they implement that, they see a huge reduction in people who actually apply for the, uh, for the social welfare uh, program itself. Um, in fact, in Alabama, they saw an 85% reduction in able-bodied adults in that program. Think about that. Because they simply said, if I have to do something to get the money, I'll just go get a job. Imagine that, right? Uh, so th this, is a, this is something that, you know, I always, I always tell folks, think about, and so many of you have a background in agriculture, think about the first job you had, right? I mean, th think about, and you know, the, some for folks in ag, I work on the farm with my brother and I, we live in the country, we mowed 25 country lawns, some people it was delivering paper, some people was babysitting, it was a waiter, waitress. That, think about that first job you had and the lessons you learned in that very first job. The skill set and the things you learned. Uh, what we're doing today in so many of our programs is we are robbing people from getting that experience we all got in those first jobs. First job making less than minimum wage, not you. I, I always. We mowed, like I said, 25 country, my brother and I, uh, country lawns. We worked our tail off. I remember when we were, we were home and the phone rang in the summer. We tried to get to the phone first because my dad answered it and it was someone wanting their, he would never turn down a job for us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we were in the background like, we don't, we don't want it. And, and he's he like, oh, they'll be right over. And, <laughs> but we, I mean, the things you learn, like we had a, Beater, old beater truck, a trailer, ride mower, push mower, weed eater, gas tanks, toolbox, Beverly Hillbillies gone down the road is what we look like. 
but dad said i'll get you started but then you're gonna you're gonna pay for the gas in the truck you're gonna pay for the gas in the mowers uh you screw around brake belts or pulleys you're gonna have to pay for them and fix them and you just learn to manage equipment resources you learn to manage your time but the biggest lesson is you learn to deal with people i mean you really did you customers and we had um we had some folks who wanted their yard, uh, their lawn mowed on Thursday, because they wanted it to look nice for the week. And we found out that they'd pay a little more if you could get it done on Thursday. <laughs> so we figured out a way to do that, right? I mean, just just the things you learn. And um, you know, I always remember the one family too. We had uh, uh, the Steinberger sisters, never married. Two sisters lived together, and uh, uh, we quickly learned with them that most places you pull in, you just get right after it. Uh, but with them, we learned it was worth your while to go up and talk to them before you started mowing. Because about the time then, when you were finishing up and you were kind of trimming around the house, you could smell the chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so you, those, that skill, and what we are doing today is we are robbing so many Americans from the values and the lessons and the principles you learn in that kind of work. And it has to change. If we're, it, it, economic reasons, but more importantly for the personal well-being of the person who gets stuck in the welfare system to help them get to a better position. So we think this is critical um, for a host of reasons and we're going to push it hard as part of the overall tax reform uh, package. Last thing I mentioned that is something I worked on um, just last week. We think it's critical. Um, a number of folks I talked to will talk about what they now perceive in America as this double standard this idea that there is one set of rules for us regular folk and a different set of rules if you're really connected and part of the powerful elite in Washington. And so last week we uh, called for a special counsel to look into the whole Comey, Lynch, Clinton saga. Uh, this is not politics, this is not trying to go after people who are no longer, you know, the election's over. This is simply about the rule of law and equal treatment under that law. If you think about what James Comey testified to six weeks ago when he said at the direction of the Attorney General he went and told the American people something that was not true. Now think about this. In the middle of a campaign, the middle of the summer of 2016, the Attorney General of the United States tells the FBI Director of the United States, go communicate a message to the American people that is not accurate. And he did it. Willingly, knowingly, intentionally. When he called the investigation a map. As I said in the hearing on uh, last week, last time I checked, he wasn't director of the Federal Bureau of Matters, right? But he did that. And um, that is just flat out wrong. And then to turn around when he gets fired and leak a government memo through a friend to the New York Times for the stated goal of creating momentum for a special counsel, and not just any special counsel, but his best friend, his predecessor, his mentor, Bob Mueller, if this, isn't, if this shouldn't be investigated, and if we shouldn't have a special counsel to look in all that went on last year. You ever seen it? I'll, I'll quit here. Get, get, get. But have you ever seen a situation where the subject of the investigation's husband gets to meet with the attorney general three days before the subject of the investigation is interviewed by the FBI? Has that ever happened before? I've never seen that happen before. But it, it took place, and it took place in the middle of a presidential campaign. There's all this talk about the impact Russia had and, and the influence they tried to exert on our election process. How about the influence the Obama Justice Department tried to exert on the election process right in the middle of that campaign as well? So we called for it. We filed a separate bill. Um, last week, we passed out a committee a resolution asking for all the documents and information and communications related to those issues. Um, and a letter was sent from judiciary members, Republican judiciary members of that committee to the Attorney General saying name a special counsel. So we'll see how that issue uh, plays out here in the next next several months as well. I'm actually really getting too fired up. Uh, next year, as you know, uh, we'll see how it takes out. I mentioned SNAP. I do think uh, it's important that we, we focus on what's best for agriculture, that basic insurance that we all need out there. We, we understand that. Um, but actually to keep the food stamp SNAP program separate. It has passed like that in the House. It got put back together in the Senate last go around three, four years ago. Yeah, uh, four years ago. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, but I do think you have to start with, by saying if you're gonna get food stamps, there has to be a work component. Our bill says a stronger uh, work requirement for able-bodied with no dependents. I always think of the single guy, you, you gotta do something. 
we have 100 hours of uh, uh, requirement a month, and but then you treat the single mom uh, a little different, and it's a, it's a smaller amount of uh, it's a 50 hour requirement in, in our legislation. So uh, we'll see how that all shakes out over the next uh, several months. I think there's some field hearings the Ag Committee is doing relative to the Farm Bill uh, here over this next next few months, and then it'll get a little more intensive again in the next year. All right. That's probably enough for me. That wasn't too bad for, I was like, 9.9 .9 minutes and 35 seconds or something. Like that. <laughs> right. that wasn't all that bad. So your chance to ask questions and fire away or whatever the boss here tells us to do. <coughs> On any subject you want. The gentleman from Bucyrus, Bucyrus. Right there, yeah. Yes. Okay. By the way, Crawford County, not one single plan is offered in Crawford County right now. If you're in the, if you're in the single, you're in the individual or small group market, not one plan is being offered. And you know, that, that can impact, I mean, farmers, you might be able to work, I assume there's a way you can work through the Farm Bureau or something, get a deal, but if you're- no, I've already been checking. Yeah. Is that, was that gonna be your question? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read no, my mind. Cyrus, I was just down there meeting with folks in the okay. chamber, okay. or through the economic development folks, mm -hmm. and they, 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 like, we're gonna have to try to work out a special deal with the chamber to get some, they, they, can't, they can't get insurance for their, Three or four employees in the, uh, the economic, economic development team there. Yeah. Small family farm, we can't. If you got a big farm, you got a lot of employees, you can get group insurance as yeah. the small families. We're grounded up right now, so it's kind of scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah that's why we need to pass the, the bill. As much as I disagree with CBO, Congressional Budget Office, the bill we passed out of the House, uh, even CBO, which I think gets things wrong a lot of I think they got this right. They said, what we what we had in there in our legislation was actually going to begin to bring premiums down, um, which would be helpful. But frankly, premiums, it's great if premiums come down, but you don't have anyone offering you a plan. Big problem. Congressman, <laughs> <coughs> on, on the uh, in the area of tax reform, um, I guess when it comes to uh, farmers and, and small business and interest deductions, and where do you I guess where do we, where do we see that going? We'll see. Uh, I mean, look, it's, it's one of the reasons we, we conservatives have held up the budget. I don't want to get into all the weeds here, but the way this works is um, you got to pass a budget so you can create this, this vehicle or entity called uh, reconciliation. And it's the same thing we did on health care. We passed a budget early this Congress, created this thing called reconciliation to deal with the Obamacare repeal um, and, and replace legislation. You have to do the same thing on this next budget upcoming fiscal year to, to deal with tax reform. We have told them we're not gonna pass it until we know more what's on the other side. Um, once you open the gate of passing a budget and creating reconciliation, you don't know exactly what the tax reform is gonna look like. And once you open the door, you can't close it. So we said, we're not gonna open the door until we have a better idea of what, what the tax bill is gonna actually be. And specifically, we were concerned about this border adjustment tax. I think folks in the Ag Committee were concerned about it as well, mostly because it might prompt a, a trade war. Um, so we've been fighting that hard. The good news was this past week they announced there's no, not going to be a border adjustment tax. That's, that's good. But we still want to get a better idea of what the tax package looks like before we create the vehicle to allow it to pass. The ethanol plants make it possible for us to make a profit on our corn. what I've, the literature I've been provided is we want to create the renewable fuels. I'm 100% I'm for ethanol, I'm just not for government involved in favoring one industry over another. Planets, whether it's wind, whether it's solar, whether it's ethanol, frankly, even even some benefits that may be in, in, in there for carbon-based uh, fuels. So we are supposed to be about free markets and free enter enterprise, not about cronyism in any form. Now. Uh, the benefit that comes to ethanol is minor compared to some of the more egregious examples of cronyism that, that I would point out, like um, the Export-Import Bank, which the funds that go for these loans, and the vast majority go to um, Boeing and CAT and some of the largest companies in the world. So, uh, but my attitude is real simple. Let, let's let's let, let competition work, let the best prevail and, and not try to have folks in Washington deciding um, who gets help. A great example is when early in the Obama administration they started this program at the Department of Energy, the Loan Guarantee Program. 
And initially they gave loans to 26 companies. Uh, average of those companies was, their, the credit rating was double B minus, which is junk status. And a whole boatload of them went bankrupt. Like Solyndra, Beacon Power, Abound Solar, all these companies. We had this huge investigation in the oversight committee. And so many of these companies had people on their boards or key people in the organization who were maxed out contributors to the Obama campaign when he first ran for office. And it's like, that is cronyism at its worst. Now, it's not the same for the ethanol industry, but that concept is not, it's just something fundamentally I disagree with. So, um, you know, I'm as pro as you can be. The Farm Bureau endorses me every time that, time for me to stand there and face the voters again, but uh, I'm just not for any type of other, other Thank you. Uh, first off, thank you for your statements about the farm bill. We need crop insurance to stay a part of it. Oh, yeah. It allows us to play the game another year when things go south. Uh, thank you for your fight on health care, and that needs to continue. Obamacare needs to go. It's killing our business. Yep. It makes me question on a daily basis can we keep doing what we're doing? Uh, your your uh, comments about the SNAP program and having to have a work component tied to that, I think are spot on and continue that fight. Uh, tied to what you mentioned about the guest worker program, even then those individuals that are looking for work probably still aren't coming to take the jobs that we need employees for. And so I think having some form of guest worker program or ability to yeah. get uh, a labor force in here that's willing to do the jobs is key. No, I thought we were gonna have a bill pass out of the committee uh, by today, unfortunately not. It's the kind of bill that makes sense. Um, those individuals, they would get the, they, once they they get the permit, they can continue to move, you know, travel north basically, uh, not have to get other permits. And it's just a simpler, better system that we're signing. There's safeguards in there. They would not be eligible for any type of social welfare <coughs> benefit, they would not be eligible for citizenship. But it hopefully would just be easier for folks who rely on those people. We got a bunch of them, as you know, in this part of the state. Um, much that I get the privilege of, of representing um, to get the workforce they need. Um, yeah, that's that has to. I think that that that's something that that we voted on before. We passed it out of committee a couple years ago, um, and it's, it's something that just is common sense. Um, so hopefully it'll happen again here when we get back to September. 